coverage in Memphis. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle. And I don't know if you can get a better first round matchup, at least on paper. Gonzaga, darlings of the tournament the last couple of years. And they don't really like that term Cinderella anymore. They feel like they've won enough games in the tournament in recent years. They're trying to shed that tag. Well, they are shedding the tag, Ian. And the thing about it is they're not sneaking up on anybody this year because people know who they are. And they can go up and down and score some points. They're led by Casey Calvary. They're all do everything type of player down low. The key thing, though, is that they can establish him down low early. They're perimeter game will open up wide open for them terrific season for Virginia this year they were ranked as high as nine in the nation but lost some confidence end of the season back-to-back -back losses prior to this tournament one thing that has become very clear the trend Donald had if he plays well Virginia normally wins he's an extension of Pete Gillen on the floor the key thing to watch for him is whether he makes good decisions or not he has really improved that over the last two or three years in his career he used to be a scorer now the general on the floor good decisions for him Virginia does well bad decisions they don't do so well. Starting lineups here at the Pyramid. And for Gonzaga, Mark Spink, Zach Gord, Casey Calvary, the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Blake Stepp, the Freshman of the Year, and Dan Dickow. What a story. Transfer from Washington, stepping in for Matt Santangelo, who graduated last season, and they have not lost a step, the Bulldogs. As for Virginia, you know about Hall, Mason, Hand, Williams, and Watson. Mark Few, what success he's had in two years at Gonzaga, taking over for Dan Munson, who left for Minnesota. Few was a 10-year assistant before getting the head coaching stint. And Pete Gillen brings his third team to the NCAA tournament. He did it at Xavier. He did it at Providence. And what a job he has done at Virginia. He's brought this school and this program back to prominence. Tremendous season, 20 and 8, 9 and 7 in the ACC, but questions about what they do on the road. That's been a problem. We'll talk about it. Officials, Tom Lopes, Jim Haney, and John Swinney for the first of four matchups in Memphis today. And I would anticipate early on that these two teams, they really like to score points, and especially Virginia. They like to turn this into almost ugly basketball, in the words of Pete Gillen. He likes to see his team really create defensive opportunities and get it going up and down both ends of the floor. Travis Watson with Cavalry. And Virginia controls the tip. Here's Williams on the outside. He's guarded by Cavalry. Straight up man-to-man -man to start things off with the Zags. And the Patterson, New Jersey native. To the outside now, Hall. 20 to shoot. First minute of play. Locks it in that left-handed delivery, and he knocks it down. So important to establish things down low. And initially with Watson down on the blocks, Virginia very set, composed in their first time with the basketball. And now they look to extend to rattle the Zags a bit. Now, Gonzaga was expected to drop off this season after going to the Sweet 16 last year, the Elite Eight the year before. But they finished off at 24-6 and 13-1 and and in the conference. Dow and Stepper, two guys that the Virginia team wants to rattle a little. Penetration. Calvary, no. Tippin wouldn't go from Spink, and it's knocked out of bounds. Virginia will have it. Well, the Bulldogs from Spokane, Washington. Enrollment, 4,500. The automatic tournament bid after winning the WCC tournament. Fourth NCAA tournament appearance, and the third in a row. Looking to establish Watson again with the left. It's Watson shuffled the feet. No call. Yeah, it could have been a call, but Calvary right there also defensively doubled down. Here's Dickow on the push, and a foul called out front on Adam Hall. You may have noticed at the end of that play, after the call, the official made the right call against Hall, but did you notice Dickow at the end of that play pulling up and shooting his jump shot? That's one thing that Mark Few knows that this guy can do, and Few gives him the green light. Push it down the floor. If you're open, they are going to let it rip. Virginia with a 2-0 lead, two of the top scores scoring teams in this tournament. In fact, both teams in the top 10. Top 10, they're ready to go. Virginia wants to rattle their guards, though. Keep the pressure on them. Step, he can stroke it. The freshman knocks it down, and Gonzaga has the lead, 3-2. Freshman who's been playing like a junior or a senior. Here's Williams, talented junior from Birmingham. Knocked around off the miss, out of bounds and Gonzaga basketball. Both of these teams are similar in the sense that they don't have shot blockers down low. But look at Step coming across, little screen out front, some release, quickness, 
You know, you better find him because he's not afraid to shoot the ball. It's amazing for a young kid how he just comes out looking to shoot also. Step 40% from three-point range this season. In the post, Calvary, nice shovel pass inside. Gord dunks and a foul. That's that high-low action. I think Calvary looking for double teams in all situations right there. Great little isolation on the right. You'll see the catch right here. Now watch for the skip pass. You get the big fella coming through. Gord wide open down the lane. Where's the defense? Defense is supposed to creep across into the middle of the lane. No help. Mason picks up the personal foul. 5-2, but Virginia up the floor quickly and a good finish by Hall. Good catch and go with it. Step maintains the dribble and gets the roll on the interior. See how quickly they come down the floor, though, after a made bucket. The Zags looking, looking to push, find little seams in the defense. They don't mind playing the Virginia-type game. Five points now for Blake Step. 7-4 Gonzaga. Hand on a fadeaway. Friendly rim. Sure is. Good little drift away from the defender, though. So far, the Zags making good decisions with the ball. Here they come again. Off a made basket in transition. And Gord comes up short. Both of these teams going after the glass. Stop and go, Mason Jr. Tough angle, nearly got it to go down, and here's Dickow the other way. Nice little tip there by Gord to spring this fast break. Dickow off the crossover, good and one. There's the way a guy can keep the pressure on you with the basketball. A lot of times we talk about defensive pressure, really rattling guards, but watch on the offensive end here. Watch the pressure that he keeps going right at him, an extra dribble, forcing hand to play defense. That's a way to come at you, and I think one of the key things for the Zags is they're showing early they're not intimidated by the ACC. First substitution, Alex Hernandez, the junior college transfer, checks in and replaces Mark Spink, the defensive player of the year in the West Coast Conference. Dickow has given Gonzaga a 10-6 lead. Bodies flying inside Gordon Watson, and it'll go against Virginia. Travis Watson picks up the personal Cavaliers out of Charlottesville and they're back in the big dance for the first time since 1997 an at large bid and 15th appearance overall Good step as he's coming down the floor yelling out plays it's a youngster back there Here's Dickow, a three. Oh, pretty. They are just really reading one another well. Their concentration level right on the money. Not rattled at all. Good, good start for the Zags right here. Virginia now, a team that has struggled on the road all season long. This is in Charlottesville right here. They have a tough situation early on. Gonzaga now five of seven from the field. Jumper from Williams doesn't go. Knocked in the air. Out of bounds, Gonzaga ball. A 13-6 Bulldog lead. Look at the penetration. Up that way, the big guy Gord says, I don't want the ball out there. Give it to Step and let them shoot the basketball. Step and Dick out. You wonder why they don't want to be called Cinderella. Great start for Gonzaga. Gonzaga with a seven-point lead. Dan Dickow, transfer from the University of Washington. He's been in the NCAA tournament before as a reserve for the Huskies. One of the best point guards on the West Coast and Jimmy... Mark Few told us, head coach of Gonzaga, that last year he had to sit out. It was like having an extra coach on the sideline. Well, what he did was he played a lot. He charted things. He really understood the offense. But most importantly, I thought it was interesting, as part of the second team, if you will, against the first team, he was really dangerous in ruining his practices because he was so effective shooting the basketball. And a turnover. Don't miss a minute of action for live game updates. Go to March Mayhem's Tournament Live at the home of college basketball. That's cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Gonzaga 13, Virginia 6. Just about four minutes gone by. First half in Memphis. Little jump step, no call on Williams. Scramble for the loose ball and... Watson picks up another. Watson using the body a little bit just then. Looked like a free basketball. And Jim Haney on the call coming in. And Watson picking up his second. Pete Gillen now has a decision to make. Let's see if there's any shoving or pushing. No, I'm not so sure. I think that's a free basketball. I think the angle was a difficult one to see from the official standpoint. But that angle right there, in my opinion, that's an open ball. Go get it. Who wants it? That's about what games of basketball are all about, going after it. Now the freshman, J.C. Mathis, will come in to replace Watson after picking up his second foul. Virginia with five fouls. Gonzaga, zero. Watson, a 12-point scorer for them. So from an interior standpoint, Virginia now has to make some adjustments. Here's Hernandez getting a touch. 
cavalry way outside. He's added a jump shot this season to his repertoire. Each year he's improved. They say about him freshman through senior year. Each year he's added things. On the drive, Dick out. Dish underneath. Gord couldn't lay it home. Gets it back for the slammer. I love when the big guys catch the basketball. If they have a problem, they're smart enough and composed enough to hold on, regroup, and then attack. A terrific move just then by Gord after he fumbled the initial play. An 8-0 Bulldog run. Here's Mathis on a back hit. Tried to duck underneath. It was knocked out of bounds. Virginia will hold on to it. You see a trend line development, too, defensively. 15-28 to go. First half in Memphis and Gonzaga Legion. Fidelity Tournament Summary. Big Ten, three teams already eliminated. Kent State, great story. Hampton wouldn't mind rubbing up against those guys in Boise after the games they had. <laughs> man, oh, man. What a, what a day yesterday. It's incredible that those lower seeds have managed to pull off. And already a lower seed is up on a higher seed here in Memphis. The number 12 seed, Gonzaga Bulldogs, with a 15-6 lead. Oh, pretty defensive play by Calvary just then. Ball had read. it blocked. Here's Dickow getting it across. Five minutes elapsed, first half. Step, the freshman. They call him Stone Cold Assassin. Uh, little step right there for Hernandez coming around the corner. So Gonzaga turns it over. Watch the defensive stand there. You got to hustle over here. A little help by the defense back. Calvary coming in for the block just then. Big fella Gord. Nice double team on the baseline, though. Really helping one another out. And some changes for Virginia as Keith Friel checks in, and Pete Gillen is going to trust his sophomore center, Travis Watson, with two personal fouls, recognizing that they need post presence right now. Post presence, and they also need Friel. Transfer from ND, a shooter, too. Penetration, hand, the floater, no. Inside, Watson, the layup, a foul call before. Hernandez from behind, I believe, with a little bit of a push, but you're right about the Watson substitution. Pete Gillen really taking a chance. Hernandez, the guy from behind with a little bit of a bump in the lane. So Virginia will toss it in. They trail 15 to 6. Friel has been instant offense for this Virginia team off the bench. Oh, Watson had it blocked. Every time they touch the ball down low, there's a double team coming at you. So you better watch out, Virginia. Inside, Gord wheels and hits. The confidence early. The lower seeds, when they get a couple of buckets going early, they get their confidence. It's contagious, and you can really see it with the Zags right now. A 10-0 Gonzaga run. Here's the catch. Look at the double coming now. And a foul call as it stops play on the interior. Gord with the reach just then, but Watson trying to get some presence down low for this team. Calvary, a guy who's going to always help out. Mark Spink, the former walk-on, checks in as Gord will take a seat after picking up that personal foul. Hand tosses in for Virginia. Another slow start for the Cavaliers. We saw it at College Park when Maryland blew them out of the building. And that game just got worse and worse for Virginia as the day wore on. Here's Friel on a pump fake. Found an opening and a push call. He was working on Dick out. And the foul assessed out front. Hey, America, Survivor's on this Wednesday. Don't miss America's most watched show, Survivor, on a special night Wednesday, 8 o'clock, 7 central on CBS. Friel off the mark on a three. Dick out with that last foul, but he's the guy who has to stay on Friel for just that, that long-range shot. Friel very good from outside. Cavaliers now three of nine from the field. 11-point Gonzaga lead. Good energy level here. On a lob, Calvary had it knocked away by Friel. And here comes Virginia on the move. Hand, pull up, pop, book it. Good decision by Hand just then. That's what it's all about. We talked about him on the open, that he has to make good decisions. Spink, defensive player of the year in their league, goes right after him but goes over with the shot. Inside, extra feed, uh -oh. and Hernandez foul. Virginia, Travis Watson, number three. Well, here's that high-low play. Look at Hand making his decisions. Watch for Spink. He'll retreat. You see him retreat just a little bit. That allows the point guard to pull up. 
but more importantly, did Watson pick up the third? Yes, he did. 13-27 mark of the first half, and we will see Stefan Dondon, the senior from France, check in for the first time. Hernandez hits on the first free throw, and here's Dondon. First decision of the day, two iron for coaching, and it goes against Virginia with that one right there. Some people would question putting a guy back in with this much time left. I can understand why Pete Gillen did it. He's feeling this, the Zags are starting to get some rhythm offensively. Virginia's not getting enough looks down low, and now a little switch of defense out front with a little trap action. And the token pressure. Virginia handles it with Mathis. Here's Mason Jr., and he is yet to catch fire as he gets the bucket. Well done by Virginia just then. Get the ball past the double team out at half court. Get it to the middle of the floor, so that way you can look left, right, and put the ball on the floor and do a lot of different things from the middle of the floor. First deuce of the day for the Cavaliers. Cavaliers leading scorer this season, Roger Mason Jr. And a push inside. Cavalry got a little extra space. Mark Few not happy with the call. Good positioning down low, but I think it was a little fend off by Cavalry as he heads out. Gord back in for him. And Casey Cavalry picking up the personal foul. 19-10, Gonzaga. Here's Mason Jr. guarded by Step. Spink on a switch off and goes down to the floor inside. Don Don couldn't catch it cleanly and then coughs it up. Look at Dick Howe reading the situation. Wow. A bomb for three. <laughs> Was it ever? Short. Here's Hand. The speed to the rim, and he missed it. He felt he was hit on the arm. I'm not sure he was. I think he just put too much on it going to the glass. Dick out, off the spin. Hernandez leaning in for two. I tell you, Dick out really keeps the heat on with the basketball, but his teammates look for him also. They recognize that he's good offensively, but he's also good at passing the basketball. Bulldogs, 8 of 12 from the field. 67%. Friel way outside. Amongst the trees, Mason Jr. using the window. Good patience there by Mason Jr. too. I think Virginia has to do a little bit more of that. Keep looking down low, but be aware that the Zags continue to double down. So that means they'll be able to kick out and spot up and hit shots. Winning away from home, that is a problem for this Virginia team. They were tremendous at home this year. University Hall, 14 and 1. And a takeaway. But we're in Memphis now, so they got to worry about being in Memphis and playing. Off the turnover, Friel pump fake. Dish off, Don Don again. Inside, he gets it to go, and a foul. Squeeze one home. It not, wasn't pretty. No, it was not. The catch, that's where he had the problems initially. The penetration, though, come down the floor. Watch this little bobble right here. He bobbles the basketball, but then the strength takes over, and somehow he manages to put the thing in off the glass. Good grabbing. And all of a sudden, Mark Few now sensing that Virginia's starting to shift a little bit with the momentum, catching some wind. And the first foul called on Mark Spink, the senior. Stefan Dondon, 74% on the season from the line, completes the three-point play. And Virginia inching closer. Six-point Gonzaga lead. A timeout. 21-15, Gonzaga in front here in Memphis. Right now, let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team. He'll be with us all weekend, and it's Brett Haber. Well, Ian, just to give you an idea of what Pete Gellin inherited here at Virginia three years ago when he took over the program, he only had six scholarship players on the roster. So Pete put an ad in the student newspaper for an open tryout for the Virginia team. He took five guys from that tryout, and to this day, three years later, he's still got two of them, Josh Hare and Jason Dowling, on the roster. What a long way to go from an ad in the paper to the NCAA tournament, Ian. Brett, you're right, and you think about it last year, they had a legitimate beef, could have been a part of this NCAA tournament. They were shunned by the committee. Off the turnover, Hand can't get it to drop. Don Don loses out. And Gonzaga gets it back, an easy basket potentially that Hand could not convert, and Hernandez almost carried it. He's, he had two, Hand going to the basket already in this basketball game that he didn't complete, but you're right, Hernandez did get away with the carry just then. Dan Dickow holds it with his team up by six. Kyle Bankhead has checked in for the first time for the Bulldogs. On the baseline, high arcing delivery, and Mark Spink couldn't get it to drop. Into the hands, of hand, and a three. Off the rim, inside, Don Don cleared out. Foul call. And that's where Spink 
really had the inside interior position just then. Don Don coming over the back. Spink a very solid basketball player. I'm not Kreskin, but I could tell you that there's a pretty good chance Mark Spink will either hit the deck or hit the scores <laughs> table sometime today. So we have to be ready over here, huh? No doubt. Well, I'm bailing out. If he comes this way, these guys are too big for us. Seventh team foul called on Virginia, so a one-on-one -on -one situation for Mark Spink, Mr. Hustle, and a player that keeps the team loose, kind of a team comedian. Hall returns, and Hand will get a breather. It's been a tough run for Hand. Missing some open shots. Spink gets the roll, a 67% free throw shooter, and yeah, something that pops to mind. This is what college basketball is all about. A freshman walk-on turns himself into a player came in at 167 pounds as a freshman six foot eight and by a senior year he's the conference defensive player of the year it's a terrific story and, and you know it really pinpoints for mark few just how he runs his program a class act spent some minutes with him yesterday very happy with the way things are going mason breaking down the defense to the rim and roger mason jr has six and after made baskets it allows virginia to come back and pressure the backcourt a little bit seems virginia has settled down a bit i think they have i think they've recognized oh we're gonna have an inside play here cavalry made his move but there was some action on the interior and they will keep it right there Looks like Friel down low, Pete Gillen's squad. They have come back a little bit, and I think they've regrouped. And I think what they've understood now is that Pete has probably mentioned to them that Mark Few's squad, every time Virginia touches the ball down low, there's a double team. So Virginia has to be under control, make good decisions down low, and they also have to recognize the penetration that the Zags are trying to just push the ball into the middle of the floor against them. One and one for Dan Dickow. He hits on the first. 86% free throw shooter on the season. He missed nine games this year with a broken finger, and Gonzaga struggled without him, five and four. Goes to show you the importance of Dickow on the floor. Really a guy you can depend on to just help you and lead from both the defensive end and offensive end. Pump fake on a three, Friel inside, rims out, and rebounded by Spink. Up ahead, here's Step. Pretty good defensive transition just then, good close on the... Right in front of Pete Gillen. 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 CBS Sports coverage of the entire NCAA basketball tournament is interactive through Ultimate TV. And a chance to go online and follow the NCAA tournament. Here in Memphis, it's 25 to 17. Gonzaga, the 12th seed, leading the fifth seeded Cavaliers. Jumper from the side, doesn't oh. go for Williams. Paul, who can sky, couldn't finish it on the follow, but Mason converts on a three. Great recognition, too. Virginia coming down the floor, understanding that the Zags have now changed into a zone because they're giving up too much down low. Handle the pressure, and Gonzaga able to advance it. Here's Dickow, one on wall with defensive stopper Adam Hall. Step pulls the trigger. Side rim on a three. Cavalry a save. Dickow straight away. Good decision just then by Cavalry, too. He was in traffic. Good rebound. Those second opportunities shows you where Dickow's range is from. He was about five feet beyond. Backdoor cut. And Hall able to finish on a bank shot. Virginia trying to pick away at this defense now. They've recognized, and I think, playing their best last three or four minutes. Pete Gillen's happy with the way the execution is going. Mark Few a little concerned defensively right now. Look where he's standing. Way outside right here. Comes up flying. Look at the good extension. He just buries it right away. As a team, Gonzaga shoots 40% from three-point range. And that's one thing about the Bulldogs. Even if they get down nine or ten points, you know they can come back in a hurry. Some contact, no call, Gore left open. How about the hesitation by Gore just then? No one even around him at the free throw line. Little hesitation, reload, and knock it through. Comes in number 11 in the nation in field goal percentage, Zach Gore, 64%. He's got eight points. That's a season average. Back to the man-to-man -man defense. Gord with a step out right now. The Zags up eight. Williams, head and shoulder fake. And a foul call. Few was looking for a travel. It's Gord who picks up his second personal foul and another substitution for Gonzaga. Anthony Reason checks into the game for the first time, the junior from Ocala, Florida, and Gord will get a breather. 
Gord really playing some strong minutes, huh? Four for six from the floor. Solid defensively. Gonzaga, 63% shooting, including three out of five from three-point range. Williams open look. Long rebound. Here's Cavalry. Pretty good balance by Virginia. Ball in particular that time back. Good set. Defense is usually, usually set up by the good shot at the offensive end. Gonzaga behind the back from Dickow. Reason on a kick out. Here's Step. Gonzaga can bring the lead to double digits again. Great matchup with Hand and Dickow out front. Inside, Spink, a swing pass. Cavalry can't get the hook, but look at Spink. Second opportunity. Dickow fending off in traffic. And it's rebounded underneath by Williams. Up ahead for Hand. On a cross-court feed, Mason Jr. Side rim. And Cavalry with a strong board. Good look up ahead. Dickow angling in. Didn't get it to go, but he is headed to the free throw line. See, both of these teams like to do just this, go up and down the floor. And neither one of them converting on the last trip. Watch the body jump here. He's going to jump from our looking at it from our left to right. Now, what you do there is you try to create contact. The first thing you want to end up doing is get to the free throw line. If you get to the line, it's successful. The second part of that shot is trying to put it in, and he nearly did. First foul on Chris. Williams, the tri-captain for Virginia. And Dickow now with 12 points. Free throws, 8 of 9, Gonzaga. 7-15 to play. First half, 31-22, Gonzaga leading Virginia. Tack one more on the board. It's a 10-point lead for the 12 the Bulldogs in the South. From the pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, first run action from the south. Gonzaga leading Virginia, 32 to 22, 7:15 mark, first half. The game summary and Gonzaga came in here a confident team, as hot as anybody in the nation, having won 18 of their last 19, and they have done nothing to change that mentality so far, Jim. No, I think what they did early on, they established that they were coming ready to play. Forget about who the competition is. They are playing like a major school in the NCAA, and I think they established that early. Their decisions were good. Virginia has regrouped a little bit, starting to play this game down low. Mathis pump fake. Here's Hand trying to get into a rhythm. Hall, a three, knocks it down. Adam Hall, a trifecta. 6.45 to go, first half, Gonzaga 32, Virginia 25. 12th seeded Bulldogs have led basically throughout. And Cavalry is called for the travel. Casey Cavalry, the conference player of the year in the WCC. Dan Dickow, 13 points to lead the way for Gonzaga. Roger Mason Jr. with nine, the high man for Virginia. And early on in this basketball game, the Zags were making quick, instinctive decisions. Now, all of a sudden, they're hesitating a little at the offensive end and running into some problems. On the baseline, out of bounds, and Virginia will hold on to it. 22 left on the shot clock. 6.23 remaining on the game clock. Mark Few, a second year as head coach at Gonzaga. He was the WCC Coach of the Year, 50 and 15 over his two-year tenure. Mason on a kick out. Paul gives up the open look. Instead, penetration, and they'll wave off the basket. Foul called before the shot. Key word there, penetration. You're absolutely correct. The way Virginia's starting to really push it right to the middle of the floor and forcing the Zags to play some tough defense. 32-25. Gonzaga with the lead. 6-15 mark now, first half. Corey Violet called on the personal foul for Gonzaga and Hall at the free throw line, 63%. Very athletic player known as the team's defensive stopper. And he now has eight points. Offense, though, has improved over his three years. Singular at the half coming up. Don't forget Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg will have scores and highlights and we'll also have live look-ins across the country as first-round action continues in the 2001 NCAA tournament on CBS. With Travis Watson with three fouls for Virginia on the bench, 
This situation has turned a little bit now for Virginia. They're starting to regroup. That's going to go the other way. That's Blake Stepp, offensive foul on the freshman. Mason Jr. and Virginia starting to extend their defense. You talk about terrific body position along the side. Watch the step. He gets the position, and what happens with Step is that he throws the right shoulder. Mason Jr. moving a touch, but it was the right shoulder that caused the contact just then right in front of the official. And Virginia has been able to hang around. Largest lead for Gonzaga has been 11. Under six minutes to play first half. Hand a three. Back to the zone and back to long range. It's been an interesting combination for Virginia just then, but their decisions and hands in particular are very, very good the last five minutes. And there's the pressure. Wow, look at the pressure. They get it across. Cavalry knocked away by hand in a break opportunity. Mathis up the floor for Hall. Williams, the trailer, good and a foul. Starting to go their direction. They are getting down the floor. Pete Gillen's style of basketball. It's not only at the offensive end, but it's really the defensive end that triggers all this. And it gets a little crazy. We've spoken to Pete Gillen before, and Pete Gillen says, well, I want them to play ugly, kind of like me. I want them to go up and down the floor. Well, he's got them working at it right now. Well, it hasn't been ugly. It's been a 10-0 Virginia run, and something has woken them up. Williams with a chance to put Virginia in front as Corey Violet picks up his second foul and Virginia leads by one with five and a half to play first half. You have to make adjustments on the fly in the NCAA tournament and I think Pete Gillen has done a terrific job of making an adjustment here and getting his team to relax. Here's Dickow on a kick out for Step. And their defensive energy level is just high powered right now especially on the perimeter. Whoever has the basketball when they get scoring range Dick out. A long three. What scoring range for him? I haven't figured it out yet. He was about a stride away from Pete Gillen on the sidelines over there. He exploded for 39 this season against Santa Clara. He's got 16 already here. Loose ball, knocked out of bounds. Last touch, Gonzaga. And look at the range. You see Pete Gillen doing his work over here, but he can't stop Dick out from long range either. Yeah, big time shot again. So the Bulldogs up by two, under five minutes to play first half. A little switch back to the man-to-man -man again. Hand. Can't answer with a three of his own, but Williams with an offensive rebound and a reset for the Cavaliers. Here's Williams, former ACC Freshman of the Year, and the bank is open. The Zags trying to get it up the floor quickly. Dick out. Watch underneath. Out. Whoa. And a foul called as Spink got hit from behind. That's one way to attack the Virginia defense is get the ball to half court before they get a chance to play defense on you in the backcourt. You look at Dickow's numbers. He's right at his average just about already. 16 points today, and it's the composure, the decision-making, very good. And Spink goes to the line because he hustled down the floor, something that you touched on earlier, Ian, and that's one thing you'll notice about this kid. He just hustles all over the place. First foul on Brooklyn, New York native J.C. Mathis from Virginia. And a substitution as Stefan Dondon checks in for Mathis, who will get a breather. Pretty good foul there by Mathis also because Spink would have had an easy layup. It wasn't a dangerous type foul. He was a little out of control, a little bit of a push, but nothing that wasn't really flagrant at all. Pete Gillen has to be thrilled that the composure has come out of his Virginia team in the first half. He told us yesterday he was a little bit concerned about their confidence after the back-to-back -back losses to Maryland and Georgia Tech to end the season. You want to come into the tournament on a roll, playing your best basketball, and I don't think, you know, as you just touched on, Pete Gillen was satisfied with the way they're playing. On a dump down, Mason cuts to the rim and Williams finds it. And they are playing smart basketball right now, and the key ingredient for them, they're a balanced team. They have five guys who can score double figures, but what they're doing now is they're balancing the basketball on the floor and they are forcing the Zags to take some time off the clock. Dickow hanging. No call with some contact. Williams gets it ahead. Here's hand on a drive. Scoop no. Oh, he's had three layup attempts that he's not been able to convert. Dickow pull up pop knocks it down. If young kids are watching that is exactly to the way to run the offensive fast break. The other way Hall rejected. Spink a factor defensively. Dickow lost it, but Cavalry on a kick out. Here's Step underneath, inside Hernandez. Oh, look at the spin. Didn't get the roll, but a foul called as Casey Cavalry strong on the offensive glass. Going after it. Both teams really pumped up, playing strong defense. Look at the second guy in. Spink coming across, making a big rejection, allowing it to kick the other way. 
and he'll step across. Watch him help out. He comes across. You have two defenders. It's usually the second guy in who gets the, the accolades of getting the block, but it's generally the first guy who forces the offensive player into a tougher position. Calvary off the mark on the first. Stefan Dondon picking up his second personal foul. And he's really the lone holdover, and Cavalry has experienced the Elite Eight and the Sweet 16, and he just missed two free throws. Tracked down in the corner, though, by Spink, and a reset. Up. Step, up three, off the rim. Spink couldn't hold on to it, and Hand is able to retrieve it out near the baseline. And Don Don a factor just then also on the glass defensively. Oh, a little crisscross. Here's Mason backing it out. Gonzaga leads by two. We approach three minutes to play first half. Mason, good and one. One of the things that's really taking over right now is the strength and the size and the ability of Virginia going towards the basket. Watch a little breakdown, but watch the step in. Hernandez a little late. How about the drift? Mason Jr. with a drift away from the defensive player. Normally guys run over people. I'll take that reaction, he says. And I'll go to the line for one more. Mark Spink, second foul. Yeah, the M.O. on Mason was he was more of a slasher. And he has developed that outside game, but you have to respect the drives to the rim, as we just saw. Three-point play, 40 to 39. Dickow leading the way for Gonzaga, but it's Virginia up by one. 306 left, first half. Back in Memphis, Virginia 40, Gonzaga 39. 306 to play first half. Travis Watson. The team's leading rebounder and the center who scores 12 and a half points per game for Virginia. He left the game with three personal fouls at the 13-27 mark first half. And although he is a very important piece to the puzzle here, they've actually had more of a flow without him. Yeah, they have. And I think the key thing is that they have a sense of urgency since he's gone to the bench. And I think the energy level has picked up, especially at the defensive end. Zags looking to regain the lead. They trail Virginia by one. Good double team jump out right here by Virginia. Timeout. Did he get the call? He did. Dickow takes the timeout. 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout at the pyramid. One point game. You wouldn't think experience would be a question mark for an ACC team going against a West Coast Conference team, but Gonzaga actually has more NCAA tournament experience. And with 2.40 to go, first half, one-point lead for Virginia. Dickow had it blacked from behind by J.C. Mathis. But a steal. Here's Hernandez angling in, using the body, and he draws the foul. And he will go to the free throw line with a chance to put the Bulldogs in front. Mason Jr. picks up his second foul. He's taking advantage of their opportunities and going for the basket. Here's Dickow challenging, but from behind again. It's usually the second guy who gets the basket, the ball rather, and blocks it and makes the big play. But Hernandez coming up with it and really getting to the free throw line. So a situation there with the Zags aware of what was going on and making things happen at their loose ball under the floor. Neither team will go that deep on their bench. Alex Hernandez is a part of the rotation. A junior from Las Vegas, Nevada. Out of Valley High School and free throws for Hernandez. Both teams have hit the 10 foul mark, so Hernandez gets a pair. You know, and we talk a lot about it goes cross with the, with the tournament in general, the low seed versus the high seed. And People, I think the fans spend a lot of time on that. But when you get on the floor right now, the last thing going through your mind as a player, you say, oh, wow, these guys are the 12th seed. They're not right. supposed to play. You know what you're thinking? These guys can play, and I better play. That's what it comes down to. Forget about the seeds and the numbers and NCAA tournament history. It all goes out the window in games like this. Well, right now, the 12th seed, if you follow it, does lead by one. Knocked away, and Mason had it picked off as he tried to drop it inside. Spink always around the basketball also. Loose balls, rebounds, block shots. He's just there. He's a factor. Here's Dickow taking his time as we will hit the two-minute mark first half in Memphis. Gonzaga leads by one. It's Gonzaga, not Gonzaga. It's a mistake made throughout the country. Cavalry. A three. Tough shot, too. He was falling away a touch. And with the good range, good look, squared shoulders. His first point of the day off the interior. Gonzaga controls it. Hernandez staying with that basketball just then. Don Don a factor trying to loosen it up. 
but could not get the basketball. How about that for the Bulldogs? Their leading scorer, Casey Cavalry, 19 points per game this season, only three first half, yet they lead by four. Steph on the interior. Doesn't get the roll. Cavalry couldn't get it to drop. And knocked out of bounds. Gonzaga will hold on to it with a minute 17 to play first half. Coming up Wednesday on CBS, Newsday calls Big Apple the season's best new drama. Find out for yourself what all the talk is about. Ed O'Neill stars in an all-new Big Apple. Special night. It's Wednesday after Survivor on CBS. Off the inbounds. Hernandez had it blocked. Gonzaga holds on to it. Dickow oh. gets the roll on a three. I love the fact that Dickow not only shot that ball, but looked towards his right to see where the defender was before reloading. 21 first half points for Dickow. Hand hanging. And a foul call. 8-0 Gonzaga run. And Hand will go to the free throw line looking to put an end to that. Hand recovering quickly coming down the floor, but you touched on it. I and Dickow has just been all over. How's six for ten from the field hit you? Four of five from threes, 21 points, and wow, the confidence level is just tremendously high for him. He really benefited from going against Matt Santangelo last year. But if you don't think this kid can score points, how does 39 points against Santa Clara hit you with nine threes in one game, a school record earlier in the year, last weekend of the season? So this isn't a fluke. He can score, and Virginia better start finding him a little quicker. And hits on a pair. 81% on the season. He now has nine, and Virginia cuts into Gonzaga's lead. A minute to play, first half. They've had some results extending the defense, and that's what they're going to try to do again here. Dick out, gives up the dribble. Inside. Maybe a hop step. It was on Hernandez. Well done execution-wise to get underneath the basket. Calvary with a very nice pass, a little catch and go real quickly, but unfortunately with the extra step down low. 11th Gonzaga turnover as Jermaine Forbes checks in for the Bulldogs. And they're trying to get another player into the game. They will. It's Corey Violette with 50.4 remaining on the clock. Spink will take a seat. 47-42, Gonzaga leading Virginia. ACC against the West Coast Conference. Nine seconds to go, first half in a five-point game. Fending off, and Hand is called for the offensive foul for Virginia. The tempo has changed a little, but what Virginia is trying to do and come back with the last 10 minutes of this half is trying to play this game in the interior and try to push the ball as much as possible. So I don't think Pete Gillen is going to have a problem with that type of call because it's an energetic offensive type move. But what he's trying to do is just trying to find out defensively half court. The Zags have been running their D, their offense pretty well. Second foul was called on Hand on the previous play, and he just now picked up his third. Good decision also. Hand on the, the lack of decision there defensively, but a good decision by Mark Few with the offense-defense. Pete Gillins had some decisions to make in this first half. The first one he had with Watson picking up his third foul was not a good decision. And now he has to make sure that Hand really have to be careful in the last 30 seconds of a half because that's when it gets a little ragged at times. So he's got to be careful. Donald Han, the senior, making his first trip to the NCAA tournament. He really blossomed in Pete Gillen's up-tempo style. And Keith Friel will check into the game, replacing Han. Gillen told Han his sophomore year, by your senior season, you'll be one of the best point guards in the ACC. He was right. Step off the mark on the second attempt, one out of two. And Virginia can hold for one with 28 seconds left first half. Shot clock turned off. It's where you just want to be very patient right here. Take a shot with about five seconds on the clock. It comes down. You have an extra chance to get a rebound, maybe six or seven seconds. You want to try to get something going towards the basket. Break somebody down off the dribble and look for a kick out if you don't have a layup attempt. Here's Mason. Six seconds. Mason makes his move with three seconds. On the outside, jumper a three. Doesn't go for Hall at the buzzer. And that's it for the first half. Gonzaga ends the half on a 9-2 run for Mark Few. And the 12th seeded Bulldogs hit the break. Leading 5th seeded Virginia, 48-42. Right now, let's check in with Brett Haber. 
All right, Ian, thanks very much, Mark. You knew these guys were going to throw pressure defense at you. They did that, but your guards seemed to handle it very well. I, I thought we handled it well when we attacked it. When we got tentative was when we struggled a, a little bit against it, and I'm sure we're going to see even more of it in the second half. But, but by and large, I was pleased with how we handled it for most of that half. All right, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Ian, back to you. All right, Brett, thanks very much. Mark Few saw his team go on a 10-0 run at one point in the first half and a 9-2 run as well. And Gonzaga leads 48-42 to at halftime. Singular at the half is coming up. Well, guess what? Everyone's taking a deep breath around the country. Four games, they're all at halftime. We'll bring you up-to-date scores and highlights and Clark 2 in a moment. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Hi, once again, everyone. Welcome to Singular at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with the aforementioned Clark Kellogg. Let's run down what's happened for you so far today. In Memphis, Tennessee, Gonzaga and Virginia. Gonzaga jumped off to a big lead. Virginia came back, and now at halftime, it's a 48-42 lead for the Bulldogs. Off the break, Virginia will grab the lead here. Adam Hall with the pass in the lane, lays it in for two and draws the foul. Cavaliers were up one. But Dan Dickow, he wears number 21. He has 21. Four or five from behind the three-point line, and they lead by six. The winner of this game plays the winner of the Oklahoma-Indiana State game. But... At various times, both these teams have been impressive today. They really have been. Virginia wants to press and turn you over and play a fast-paced game. Gonzaga, one of the highest-scoring teams in the tournament. They don't mind playing fast, although they've turned it over about 11 times in that first half. Dickhouse fun to watch, isn't he? He sure is. He's great at off the dribble and also setting up other people. At the Louisiana Superdome, Temple's Owls lead Texas by a score of 41 to 22 at halftime. Temple's guard Quincy Wadley. Watch him turn around, knock down the three, and Temple led by six. But Darren Kelly going to give Texas an opportunity. Leaves it for Maurice Evans, the throw down and the foul. Temple was only up two there. But then Lynn Greer to Alex Wesby for the three. Temple led by ten, and they've maintained the double-digit lead. And the winner of this game plays the winner of Florida, Western Kentucky. And we talked about this game a little earlier today, Clark. Texas tends to be a little erratic at times. We saw it cost them in the Big 12 championship game, and it's cost them so far here today. And it compounds itself when you talk about the defense that Temple plays, and Temple has zero turnovers in the first half. Greg. Gee, a Jan Ch John Cheney team. Imagine <laughs> that. In Kansas City, Butler and Wake Forest are at halftime, and the Bulldogs lead Wake by a score of 43 to 10. Butler's LaValle Jordan. Watch him. Position right down the lane. Left-handed tip in. Bulldogs lead by five. They also did it outside, Greg. Thomas Jackson, beautiful bounce pass here across court. That's Brandon Miller knocking down the three. Butler was on its way, leading eight to two there. And then watch Miller drive into the lane, kick the ball to Rylan Hangy, who pump fakes, drives, finds Thomas Jackson, top of the key, his three finds the bottom of the net, and Butler leading Wake Forest by a score of 43 to 10. Number seven seed Wake Forest, you know they're a better team than this, but what do you do when you're a coach and your team has put 10 points on the board in 20 minutes? Well, Greg, it looks to me like but Wake Forest has lost all confidence. They really struggled late in the year. They don't have one of their key players, Craig Dawson. He's out, and they've just not been able to find any kind of rhythm, and sometimes the ball just does not go in the hole, but give Butler some credit defensively. Not well. only that, though, I'll bet you at halftime, he says the odds are going to start to go our way, and they're going to start to fall in the second half. Well, they hope so. Okay. In Kansas City, Butler and uh, Wake Forest, 43 to 10. And Northwestern State and Illinois, the Illini lead it by a score of 44 to 29 in Dayton. Watch Frank Williams steal the ball, take it down court, behind the back to Marcus Griffin, jams at home. The Illini led by four. They were up 10 zip to start the game. Beautiful penetration and kick by Williams to Sergio McClain, and he buries the three. 10 zip, Illinois. And then Brian Cook takes advantage. Nice ball movement, hits the open jumper. The Illini I lead by a score of 21 to 6 there. Northwestern State made a little bit of a comeback, but Illinois appears to just have way too much. I think that's the case. They've got too many guys that can get it done in too many different ways. All right. Those of you who have been watching the game in New Orleans between Temple and Texas, we'll send you back for second half action. We'll continue with the rest of you folks in just a moment. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Getting ready for the second half at the Pyramid in Memphis. First round action from the South and Gonzaga leading Virginia 48 to 42. Welcome back courtside, everybody. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarco. Well, we knew going in that they are considered Gonzaga from a mid-major right. conference. 
they are not a mid-major program. Not at all. And, you know, we talked about how they tried to sneak up on people. They obviously haven't snuck up, and, and Virginia is ready for them. They understand that this team goes up and down the floor, and Mark Few was concerned about that. He said, hey, we can play with anybody. We'll let the world know that we can play at this level, and they've done it so far in one half. Take a look at the halftime numbers now. Six-point lead for the Bulldogs. Points in the paint. That's where Virginia has done most of the damage. And Van Dickow with 21 points for Gonzaga. Moments ago, Brett Haber caught up with Pete Gillen. All right, thanks, Pete. Uh, you guys have been putting the pressure on them. It's just that their guards have yeah. been handling it. Now Hand has three fouls. What yeah. do you do now? Up tempo, Brett. We want to make it a, speed it up a little bit. Hopefully, tire him out. Uh, Dickow's killing us with three, so we just gotta, you know, we gotta get Travis Watson, uh, uh, one of our best players, at three fouls. So we're all right. We just gotta keep the tempo up. All right, thanks, Pete. Thank you. Good luck in the second half. And also, Jimmy, I know with Donald Hand, that may change strategy for Virginia a bit. Three personal fouls. They do like to keep that pressure, but he might have to back off. Well, here's Thanks, the Brett. first thing that he's done. You have Step being defended by Hand, so Dickow will be handling the ball more with Mason Jr. on him. So there's an adjustment for Pete Gillen right off the bat. We're underway. Second half. Gonzaga in the blue. Virginia the white inside. Gore. Nice move to the rim. Smart recognition, though, by Mark Few and company. Who do they go after? Watson. So Watson with the three fouls. Why not give it to Gore? Let him do his thing down low and force Watson to defend him. And the sophomore now has ten. Mason tried to drop it inside. Last touch. Gonzaga. Virginia will hold on to it. 28 seconds elapsed. Second half. And Pete Gillen, I think, made a good point in that interview with Brett just then. Get the ball inside to Watson and try to get him involved again offensively. Here's a guy who's been really taken out of the game because of foul troubles. Try to reestablish him if you can. Virginia started off slowly. They went on a run in the first half as Williams able to knife down the lane for two. And I think they regained their confidence a bit. There were some shaky moments early on. I agree with you, but Gillen's comments were pretty good. I thought, we're okay. Inside, Gore blew it on the interior. Most people might have thought that Gillen would be concerned. He's a positive thinker. He keeps the tempo up. Mason lines it up and knocks it down, a three. And I think they are okay after this display for a minute or so. And very alert basketball, but looking for guys who can just find spots on the floor. Now we'll see if the Zags can come back and make some good decisions at their offense at offensive end of the floor. 17 points for Roger Mason Jr., leading Virginia. It's a three-point Gonzaga lead. Step gives up his dribble. Good defense by Mason. Here's Dickow. You gotta get it to Calvary, I think, down on the blocks, though, against Watson at some point. Dickow, penetration and foul. Dan Dickow can find open spaces. He'll squeeze in between two bodies. And here's the penetration down the other end. Hall coming down the floor, and where's the find? Nobody's out there at all. Mason Jr. just ripping away, and that's the kind of play that Pete Gillen loves. Push the ball down the floor, look for some open spots, a little penetration, and a kick out. Second foul on Chris Williams. New shot clock for Gonzaga to work with. It's going the other way. Some action on the interior. And Casey Cavalry. That's his second. Big wipeout down low. Trying to get down low on the blocks. You'll watch it here. He's going to roll. And that's going to be a push off. Boom. The official right on it. Good call. I think that was Williams defensively. Just that little flail. Little throw the arms back as you're falling down. Catch the attention of the officials. It's been a frustrating day for the senior. Watson on a kick out. Mason Jr. Again for three. Not too frustrating for him, though, huh? He's really coming alive when somebody has to step up for Virginia. Mason Jr. just finding the range. He was solid as a freshman player last year. He has just exploded as a sophomore. 20 points, and Virginia and Gonzaga are all tied up. Didn't get it across, and a 10-second call on Dickow. That's where the indecision comes in. Virginia picking it up on Dickow a little bit, and that's what we talked about in the first half. A little bit of indecision. And you look at Calvary right there, the number is 19 points on the season. Three is not shaping up too well for the Zags. The West Coast Conference Player of the Year has been held in check. An 8-0 run for Virginia to tie this game. Look at Spink now on Mason Jr. way outside. Williams pulls the trigger. Can't get the three, but look how high Hall gets. That's not going to count because Spink's, Spink was on him after the shot. But how about the rebounding, the offensive edge? That's one of the things Virginia does very well. Keep in mind, once again, they're a balanced squad. And look at the positioning down low, little body bumps. Wow, go upstairs and Spink over the top. Not a whole lot he could do in that position. Spink with three fouls, that's a big one, too. So Alex Hernandez comes in to replace Spink. And a side out for Virginia, looking to break the tie. Mason gets the step to the rim. Follow doesn't go for Watson. 
And here comes Gonzaga in transition. Dangerous pass, but it somehow got to Hernandez from Blake Stepp. And hand playing with three fouls. I, and I think he laid off just a little bit on that. Pull up, pop for three. Short from hand. Gonzaga leads it 52 to 50. Look at Gord running the roadblock just then. Off the stop and go by Dickow. Here's Gord, good possession. With a ball fake and a follow dunk by Calvary. Nobody blocking out Calvary just then in the middle of the lane. Williams got caught in the air and Gonzaga out of bounds as Hernandez tried to save it. Big guy going to the basket with the drive. Watch, he's going to come around the corner here. Now watch all the defenders. They're going to shift to this side of the floor. What does it do? It opens up a lane and just follow the tracking of the basketball and you have wide open opportunities. Bulldogs lead by four on the inside. Bucket doesn't go down, but a foul called as Williams, who is very athletic, was able to get that shot off. One of the things that will wear you down if you're Gonzaga is the fact that Pete Gillen's squad loves to put the ball on the floor. And because of the balance, you know, most college teams now don't have a whole lot of centers, the 6'9 and above guys. Virginia's a team that has quick guys, 6'8. Williams is a guy who can put it on the floor and they keep the pressure on you. That may tell, tell out as we go along this game. Well, near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Third foul on Zach Gord. So Gonzaga has made a substitution. And Jermaine Forbes has checked in. Let's see if the decisions are quicker. Knocked out of Forbes' hands, and he gives it away. Foul call. And Corey Violette, big man in the middle, is collared with a personal. We've had situations in the first half where the Zags had problems getting it across and making decisions quickly, and then here, another opportunity for Virginia to stop them at half court. And that's number three on Violette, so foul trouble now beginning to mount on the big people for Gonzaga. Four team fouls called on the Bulldogs. Only one on Virginia also. A three-point Gonzaga lead. Here's Hand off the zigzag. Williams looked for an opening. Hand in a mismatch. Williams. Here's another mismatch if he can get in there and go right over him. He's trying with Dick out. Off the back end. Ran into a wall and the ball got knocked around. A turnover. Pretty good help on the weak side defensively, though. Williams could have elevated over Dick out that time. He was trying to set him up. Here's Dick out with Williams on the other end. Forbes, ball fake. Hall sticks with him and knocks it out of bounds with 15.57 to go, first half. A timeout. Mark Fuse, Gonzaga Bulldogs, leading Pete Killens, Cavaliers. First round action from the South Region in Memphis. Welcome back, everybody, to the Pyramid. Gonzaga leading Virginia, 54 to 51. And just over four minutes gone by here in the second half. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinarkle, Brett Haber. And Gonzaga basketball. And we'll see if Mason Jr. can continue to slow down Dickow. Inside. Oh, pretty play by Williams from behind. And Cavalry had it knocked away. Here's Williams straight away. Virginia down three. Watson gets a touch. He's been very quiet. And he hits the outside shot. Three fouls for Watson in the first six minutes and change limited his floor time. But he now has four points to the rim. Blocking foul as Step took it strong. I think that's a good call, too, because the defender hand slid right underneath. And that'll be number four on him. If you see the drive goes right by Watson, not a factor, continues up. Yeah, see, he's moving a bit. He has not established, and he's moving and trying to draw some contact defensively. One of those decisions there by hand, as you see, four fouls on him. Maybe one you got to pull away right there with plenty of time on the clock, about 15 and a half minutes. And costly. He is their only true point guard that is part of the rotation. Roger Mason Jr. can handle the ball if necessary, but hand is the player that... Sets the tempo for Virginia as Friel will check in the transfer from Notre Dame. In for hand after picking up his fourth personal foul at the 15-28 mark. Second half. And step. Now has eight. So in hand exits, it's a three-point game. We'll see if Gonzaga can take advantage of that. Inside again. Same play for Watson. On a fadeaway. Off the rim. 
And Calvary able to bring in the loose ball. Dickow off the misdirection. Hall sticks with it. Hall, another pretty good defensive player for Virginia. They go right at it here. Inside, Violet with a hook. See, I think every time they catch the basketball down there with Watson within defensive territory, I think you just have to plow your way towards the basket. The prep player of the year from the state of Idaho last year, the freshman Corey Violet, his first deuce. Good ball movement. Hall gets it back inside and over the top. And that's number four on Violet. And you see down the defensive end, this is Watson right here, 35 in white. And I think you just have to keep challenging him because you notice he's really just a body in there. He's putting his hands up. He's trying to stay away for at least another four minutes. Stay away from that fourth foul. The starter, Zach Gord, will come back in to replace Violet. And Gord is playing with three personals. Mason to toss it in, and a five-second call. You talk about the frustration, Pete Killen. You know, it's just, what do you do? I got to get the ball in bounds, he's saying. Somebody has to get it in. And Mark Few at the other end, happy with his defensive effort just then from an out-of-bounds set. Here comes a little show of a trap. Tenth Virginia turnover. Dickow on the attack. And Gore couldn't catch it. The simple fundamental things of basketball. Catch the basketball before you try to do something with it. You can access live stats from every tournament game through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. 58-53, Gonzaga leading Virginia. Williams is a nice matchup here, I think, for Virginia. Good with the basketball. Force Calvary out on the floor. Here's Williams. Had it knocked away by Hernandez and a steal. Here's Hernandez running the floor. And goaltending. Hall pinned it up off the glass. Well executed defensively, I thought. Gonzaga very effective there in shutting down Williams with that little penetration dribble. Ten points for Hernandez and a timeout. 14-10 to play, second half. Seven-point game. four games in Memphis today the South region first round action and Gonzaga with the seven point lead on Virginia rest of the day looks like this Oklahoma Indiana State coming up a little bit later on tonight the defending national champion Michigan State takes on 16th seeded Alabama State their first ever trip into the NCAA tournament and we'll wrap things up with the 8-9 game California and Fresno State Virginia ball, they trail Gonzaga by seven with six minutes gone by in the second half. Donald Hand is on the bench, the floor have, leader with four fouls. Mason may have gotten poked in the face there in the eye area. Well, maybe in the nose, too. Got a little slap up going for the basketball, inadvertent. Officials didn't catch it. And you see defensively, Hernandez on the other side of the floor flicking up at the basketball. And may have gotten him twice, actually. They resume with 15 to shoot. Mason handling it. And a touch foul on Hernandez way outside. And more importantly, it goes to 16 fouls for them. Coming up Saturday on CBS, a sting operation exposes police corruption. Now the toughest fight against crime is between the cops themselves. Don't miss Craig T. Nelson in the district Saturday on CBS. Here's Mason. Look at him go after the ball, though. And a break opportunity for Gonzaga. Spin to the rim. Hernandez blocked by Hall on the weak side. Good job, though, by Friel just then. Also getting his position defensively. That's the reason you get a block. See, Friel comes in and stops him, forces the turn, and now look what happens. Second guy in again. It's usually the second guy who gets the block. Calvary, short, but a foul. <laughs> Still looking for ways to get Calvary involved at the offensive end of the floor. Only two for six so far. Five points. And the third foul on Chris Williams. I think everybody in this building has three fouls or more right now. It's starting to mount up, isn't it? Casey Calvary, his numbers have gotten better every season, but free throws have been a problem. So far this afternoon for him, he's now 0 for 3 from the line. Only 62% on the season, so in a close game, that would be probably a choice that you want to focus on if you're Virginia as this thing wears along. A fiery personality. And a senior history major from Tacoma, Washington. Another local product for this Spokane, Washington-based school. Good skip pass. Hall gets the step. 
Athletic couldn't get it to drop. The follow doesn't go. They had two shots at it. Williams and Watson. And they were clear shots also, especially the first drive along the baseline. And that's a basket they needed. Gonzaga can bring it to 10 or 11. Hernandez looks to the interior. Step. Uh -oh. Thought about it and shuffled the feet. Took a step. A little shuffle outside. Indecision there. But Mark View's team making pretty good decisions overall in the second half. Step with the little shuffle out front. We talked about Hand being a key to Virginia's success. Since his fourth personal foul, Gonzaga has gone on a 7-0 run. Mason Jr. Oh. a three. Front rim. Hernandez tries to push. Virginia has to start getting it going towards the basket again. When you're in trouble, you must start attacking off the dribble and looking down on the blocks. Knocked out of Dickow's hands, but Gonzaga will maintain possession. And now Hand pops off the bench. 12-40 mark. Second half. Four personal fouls on the senior. And let's see who he defends. That's the key decision right here. He's going to go after Hernandez. Let's see if Mark Few takes a chance of getting the ball in Hernandez's hands somewhere in the scoring range. Mason Jr. will get a rest. Whoever hand is step now being guarded by him, so he's switching off on all this, the cuts down low. Gord gets it inside. Cavalry trying to save to the wrong team. Here's Virginia on the run. The acceleration, and Hall can't convert. Having their opportunities. Unfortunate for Hall. They better get back quickly. Here comes a long one. Hernandez knocks it down for three. Hernandez with some good confidence and a terrific spot up. Find some real estate on the fast break. Get your confidence going. Think shot before the ball arrives. 10-0. Bulldog run. Oh, good hands again defensively. And off the shot clock. Substitution for Virginia. And Virginia will hold on to it. Start running the floor. See what the dribble does. It brings the defender into the middle of the floor. Spot up. Before you even shoot the basketball, you have to have an understanding of the ball's going to come in my direction. Catch and go it usually means pretty good results. Hand gets it in for Hall. We are under 12 minutes to play now. Second half, an 11-point Gonzaga lead, matching their largest cushion. Hall, pump fake. Oh, pretty, pretty. He can't get it to drop. Adam Hall continues to struggle from the field. He is 3 of 11. Stick out. Uh-oh. Boom. Followed on a dunk. Interior as Cavalry was able to break free. Big time follow. How about the long range shot, though, by Dickow? The long range shots come off hard. This one comes off soft for the dunk. Timeout. 12 0 run for the Zags. Sixty six to fifty three Gonzaga leading Virginia the 12th seeded Bulldogs in front. Let's flash back now January 2nd as Gonzaga took on New Mexico and Casey Calvary <laughs> brought down the house a 42 minute delay in that game but he missed the dunk this time he made it and he didn't shatter any glass. You remember the name Daryl Dawkins. Oh sure. I was a teammate of his when he brought one down with the Sixers. It's always a spectacular event when that happens. You don't see it very often. Darvin Ham did it for right. Texas Tech in this tournament against North Carolina. And you're right. It's just no, nothing but delay the game. But it's an exciting play. It's just the same. Virginia scoreless in their last eight trips. Big lead now. Zags back into their zone defense. Force it out onto the floor. Virginia has to bring it in. Here's Hand trying to break down the defense on a kick out. Good look for Friel on a three. See, that's part of their offense. Friel can knock that down. The transfer from Notre Dame. He is just a flat-out three-point shooter. Pretty a penetration just then against the zone by Hand. From Durham, New Hampshire. A three-point gunner, Friel, able to hit. Maurice Young now on the floor for Virginia. Inside. I tell you what, Alex Hernandez has given this team a lift off the bench. He sure has. I mean, four of seven from the floor, five of eight, excuse me, putting it up. And a bomb for Friel, a three. Somebody better find him because he's a rhythm streak shooter. Dickow wasting no time. A big shot for Dickow off balance. And the pace continues. Tempo up and down. Hand has to be careful with his decisions, though, with the four fouls. Friel pump fake, fending off. 70 to 59, Gonzaga. Three for Hand. Short. Inside. Mathis is fouled. Good stay by Mathis just then, too. That ball kicked off very quickly on him. Well, look at Dick Aldo reading the situation. Friel a touch late getting over. And that's just when you have to find a way to get it to the glass. 
Great concentration just then by Dickow, who's just putting on a show, really more so in the first half than here, but 23 total points. Just a terrific all-around game. Fourth foul on Mark Spink, and the 17th foul on Gonzaga. One and one, J.C. Mathis. He's the son of a coach, high school coach, John Mathis, John F. Kennedy, in New York. His dad played in the ABA. And he hits on the first. A 49% free throw shooter on the season. And a young man. He started college at the age of 17. J.C. Mathis said that Nate Tani Archibald was a huge influence in his life. He got to know him through his dad. Mm -hmm. And Mathis ended up choosing Virginia over Georgia Tech. Not a bad player in his own right, huh? Tiny Archibald, not only from a scoring standpoint, but also as a playmaker with assists. Second attempt. Knocks it down and a timeout. 70 to 61, Gonzaga. Back with more for Memphis. 70 to 61, Gonzaga leading at 10-10 mark. Second half, Pete Gill in his 16th year as a head coach third year at Virginia and he has gotten this team back into the big dance Mark few back-to-back appearances for him in his two years as the head man at Gonzaga fourth NCAA tournament overall for the Bulldogs program and Mark has his team dancing in the big dance right now they're trying to deliver a knockout punch in the next four or five minutes important for Virginia to stay with them kick out oh, defended by young and some action away from the ball Bodies had gotten stacked up on the interior with the crisscrossing. Gonzaga trying to really use the baseline cuts, and Virginia has been switching in each exchange. Second foul on J.C. Mathis. And the fourth team foul on Virginia. So Gonzaga gets a fresh clock to work with. And here's Dickow. Calvary back in there. Dickow pulls the trigger, can't hit the three, and Friel did a good job fending off Hernandez to allow Watson to get the loose ball. Dickow with that quick release just then, looking away. Friel, he's been hot, couple of pumps. Good no call. He got contact, dropped it inside in between the legs of Calvary, <laughs> and got it to Young for two. Well, that's how they set that play up, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gillen's a genius. Calvary, no good for three, and Watson cleans the glass. So he's been struggling to find the range, Calvary. So that's a good defensive set there again for Virginia to try to get back into this basketball game. Hand is back on the bench for Virginia with those four personal fouls. They'll try to get by with Mason at the point. Good screen. Freel. Good for three. Big time screen by Mathis, too. That's the reason he was so free on the left wing. That's Pete Gillen at his best, calling guys who have a rhythm. I need a bucket. I need three points. Let me go to the shooter. Set up a play for him. Well executed. Third trifecta of the day for Keith Freel at a 7-0 Virginia run. And you'll Look up, and all of a sudden, the scoreboard is back in Virginia in terms of the, the rotation going in their flow. <laughs> Runner on the inside was missed, and Virginia breaks out, trailing by four. Mathis filling the lane. Offensive foul. 8.28 to play, second half. Number 12, Gonzaga leading. Number five, Virginia, 70 to 66 here in Memphis. Yeah, the trend line has just been going up and down all afternoon. Mark View's team trying to spread it out a little bit against Virginia, take the lead beyond the double digits and put them away. But Pete Gillen's squad just hanging around and do what they do well. They play up-tempo defense, try to push it, get it through the floor. So on paper, it was supposed to be just like it's playing out. Step off penetration, pump fake by reason. Here's Dickow, he can stroke it. Look at how softly it is. A three ball for Dickow straight away, and he's got 26. Five three-pointers for Dan Dickow. It's amazing how softly his shot comes down from long range. Generally, they come down and they kick. And a whistle stops play. Another offensive foul assessed to Virginia. CBS Sports Line stat of the game and points in the paint. Virginia has been limited so far in the second half after taking advantage in the first. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Fourth foul called on Travis Watson. We're just at the eight-minute mark, too, so 
it's time to just let him play out. And Hand with four probably be back fairly soon. He pops up off the bench. Dickow in a half-court set. Calvary has been limited here offensively. Dickow puts it on the floor. And a foul called on the pass. But Virginia has just picked up its seventh team foul. So free throws will be coming up. At least one of them in a one-on-one. -on -one. Keith Friel picks up the personal. You put a guy at the line who's knocking him back at a mere 86% as you see Hand coming back into this basketball game. And Pete Gillen has now made the decision. We are getting down to crunch time here. 7.44 left. He's in trouble. He's in the hole a little bit. He's got to take Hand and Watson and keep him on the floor. Dick Al. Doesn't get the roll. It's knocked outside and controlled by Friel. 86% and out. 73-66. Hand is back. Friel off the mark on a three. And it's tracked down by Steph in the corner. He can knock that back, but maybe a little too quickly just then. You want to try testing the waters down low first. Dickow is incredible the way he changes speeds. Hesitation is beautiful is right. Reason on a bounce in the pivot. Watson with four fouls. That's why they're giving it to him down on the blocks. Kick out. Gore to step with 15 to shoot. Gonzaga looking to add to its lead. Dick out Good on lob. a lob upstairs. Knocked away and last touch Watson. Gonzaga will have eight seconds remaining on the shot clock. When we come back to Memphis, 73-66. Bulldogs leading the Cavaliers. Gonzalo leading Virginia, 73-66, just over seven minutes to play in the second half. This Gonzaga team just one of five programs to reach the Sweet 16 the last two years. Duke, Florida, Michigan State, and Syracuse, the big boys. Cavalry doesn't get the roll on the mini hook. And knocked outside, Virginia in transition. They trail by seven. After the last time out, they did a pretty good job. Hand! Buries a three. They went on a 7-0 run after their last time out. Hand with the three. Let's see if they can pick it up defensively right now. 12 points for the senior. Step. Gets around Friel inside, and that's an easy finish for Casey Calvary. Remember, Watson has the four, and he recognized that beautifully. Stop and go by hand. Step sticks with him. Calvary has 10. 75-69. Nice cut to the rim. Watson, no. Follow, yes. And it's J.C. Mathis. A great no call from the officials also. Let him play. Good slip cut just then by Watson. He's got to be careful, though. Calvary almost had him on the fifth foul with the charge. A four-point disparity as we come up on six minutes to play. Reason looks to the interior. It's all about decisions right now. Step had a notion. Dickow, corner three. Got it! Step and Dickhouse. What a combination in terms of working together as guards. 29 points for Dickhouse, and Hand takes it end to end. What a recognition by Hand just coming down the floor. He had Step backpedaling and recognized that he could go right by him with the shoulders. Donald Hand, the tri captain, has 14. It's 78 73, Bulldogs. Dickhouse is going to keep the pressure on him, though. Hand with four fouls. Stop the dribble right there. He did. Gord on the outside. Into the hands of Dickow. Shot clock at 12. On a switch off, Mason will D up. Nine to shoot. Crossover by Dickow. Finds an angle for a hook. Knocked around. Loose ball is claimed by Gonzaga. Out of the corner. Two-pointer. Dan Dickow's shot doesn't go. Inside, Gore. Couple of pumps. And he draws the foul. Good use of the head and shoulder fit. I've been amazed all afternoon at how Dickow gets his shots off, and they are so soft when they come down. Watch how softly this just hangs around the rim a couple of times. Gord right there, I think he should have gone up the first time because he had Watson on his back. Watson doesn't want any part of it still with five minutes left. He's got to worry about the foul problem. Mason picks up the foul, and Gord off the mark on the first attempt, 51% on the season. Game summary, and a five-point Gonzaga lead with just over five minutes to play. Numbers have been fairly close. It's Dickow who has stood out with 29. Gore, he missed them both. Watson claims it and gets it ahead for Freo. Good save just then by Watson. He may have gotten pushed a little bit, but going out of bounds at the same time, catching and turning and looking for a teammate. Under five minutes to go at the pyramid. 
Hand defended by Forbes. See if they can get Watson involved down on the blocks. They look for him, but a kickball called as Mathis put it off the foot of Calvary. Gonzaga shooting 51%, 9 of 15 from three-point range. That's good for 60%. And Pete Gillen will work Chris Williams back into the lineup after this timeout. A 30-second timeout with 4.50 to play. Gonzaga up by five. Game reset, Virginia trailing Gonzaga by five. 4.50 mark, second half. You see the team fouls. Both teams in the one and one right now. Timeouts, Gonzaga has plenty, and possession arrow favors Virginia. It's not unusual for Pete Gillen to have only one timeout left as he goes down towards the end of a basketball game, and he's had some success after timeouts. Keep in mind, Friel's on the floor. They like to have him go long range. Hand playing off the ball. Here's Mason. Pull up. Off the window for Mason. He's gotten so much better in his career, short career, and getting the ball and going with it. Solid execution off the timeout. 22 points for Roger Mason Jr. And a three-point game. Dickout gets it inside. Calvary, great position. Count it, and a foul. I think the foul is going to be down low. A terrific lob to the basket. Notice the hold off, but it's coming towards the basket, so the big guy can just catch and go. I think it was Friel down low as he scraped as he went by. It was Friel on the brush, and he is called for his third personal foul. 4.23 to play, second half, 80 to 75, Gonzaga leading it, as Calvary could not complete a three-point play. Virginia has been able to hang around. Gonzaga had a double-digit lead on a few occasions, 11-point lead, their largest. And Mason Jr. has been a big responsibility for coming back with Virginia. Inside, Watson, early foul trouble has plagued him. But he gets that deuce, and he has six overall. Now, that was a storyline early with Watson. The early fouls, three in the first half, never got on track down low, so they could not establish him offensively, but they're going to look for him as this game progresses now with just under four to go. The freshman step. Puts it on the floor. Hard drive. Dish off. Finds Gore for the dunk. There's where Step takes the pressure off Dickow a little bit with that drive. He saw the opening. He was wide. Real good read going to the basket. Bring the defenders towards him. Real not a factor defensively. Virginia has scored on its last five possessions. They need a bucket here. Mason a three. Knocks it down. Nothing short of sensational the way he's playing right now. He's matched. Dick out just about bucket for bucket in the afternoon. A good one in Memphis. 3.20 to go, second half. Gonzaga leads by two. Inside, Calvary denied. Gets it back. Good, and the foul. You see a little taste of why he's been the, was the player of the year this year in their conference. They're trying to ride him right now. A quiet first half for him. Look at the body position, though. Virginia recognizes. Mason Jr. comes over, and Calvary just stays on it and continues to go after it. And a little bench support to boot. Fourth foul on Chris Williams. Calvary. Will be at the free throw line after this break. 3.14 to go. It's 84 to 80. Jags. It was 1969. Peace, love, and music were in the air. And these guys? Anyone see my slide rule? Were nowhere near it. Give it a whirl. They were busy developing what would become the Internet. <laughs> As the Internet evolved, so have we. BBN became GTE Internetworking, and today, we're Genuity, providing e-business solutions from the people who started it all. Genuity. Gonzaga in front, 84 to 80, 314 to play in the second half, and coming up Monday on CBS, what's worse than an annoying father-in-law? Losing your annoying father-in-law. The manhunt begins on an all-new King of Queens, and that's Monday on CBS. The Gonzaga Bulldogs, Sweet 16 last year, Elite 8 the year before. They have been consistent, and they're trying to advance to the second round against Virginia. Calvary, one of five at the line, and his problems continue there. Virginia has to forget about the foul trouble now. They have to just play aggressive basketball. Hand on a kick out. Williams tracks it down as we approach three minutes to go, second half. Here's Mason. They've been riding him offensively. 
Martin trying to get it to the basket. And a wraparound foul called on Hernandez. And so good off the, the dribble. Mark Few recognizing that, not happy with the call. I think more so maybe not happy with the footwork of his defender just then reaching around. Third foul on the junior college transfer. 18 fouls on Gonzaga. One and one for Mason. And J.C. Mathis checks back in. Williams heading out, trying to avoid the extra foul. Pete Gillen working the bench right now. It's all about working the bench, both ends. Mason, 26 points. He shoots it at 88% at the free throw line. He had a stretch this year where he hit on 45 in a row. Virginia, number one in the ACC in free throw shooting. And in a close game, could be the difference. Gonzaga shoots it at 68%. Two point disparity, 254 to play. Back in the South, Gonzaga leads Virginia 84-82. Hopefully the start of a great day here in Memphis. And coming up next year on CBS, first round action continues. Midwest, Charlotte, Tennessee, 243 tip off. The other times are approximate, including Western Kentucky and Florida. And in a close game, Pete Gillen stays with what's got him here. The full court pressure. He's just going to continue to play the rest of this game, just as he does always. Up tempo it, try to make some defensive turnover opportunities for them. And Gonzaga up two. Where the ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch, Virginia. Shot clock at 25. Gonzags have to still be obviously very aggressive with the basketball. Make good decisions, but be aggressive at the offensive end. Dickow taking his time. Gives up his dribble. Here's Step. They'd like to get it down low if they could. Gord is looking for position with Watson playing with four fouls. Calvary. Tough catch. On a kick out, Hernandez. Can't hit it. And it's rebounded by Mason for the moment. Knocked towards the sideline. And Virginia holds on to it. And Mathis continues to be a factor. Just getting loose balls, getting opportunities to give Pete Gillen some extra lives. Virginia down two. We come up on two minutes to go. Give it to him and get out of his way, huh, Mason Jr.? Mason on the perimeter. Oh, Penetration pretty. for the tie. Off the rim. Inside Watson. Spilled to the floor. And it's going the other way. The officials now confirm. It looks like they're going to stay with the call. Unfortunate for Watson right here. He has pretty good opportunity. Just loses the ball because he brings it down. Well, I don't know. Quick one to make the call on just then. They're going to give it back to Virginia, huh? Yeah, they just yeah, changed their mind. Off Hernandez. So I hesitated a tiny bit right there because it did look like off a blue shirt. So the Cavaliers retain it. Good work from the officials, though. Mathis gives up his dribble. Hall the cutter. Inside, Hall on a kick out. And Mason will back it out. Good decision right there. Little ragged just then. An opportunity to turn the ball over, pull it out, and reload. Just 20 seconds to go. Minute 35 on the game clock. Gonzaga up two. Hand. Outside. Mason knocks it down for three. And Virginia leads by one. And Hand with a beautiful skip pass. All the byproduct of driving that ball towards the basket. 30 points for Roger Mason, Jr. And Mark Few will have a chat with his team with a minute 16 to go. Virginia has hung in there throughout the day, and they lead it 85 to 84 late. A one-point Virginia lead with a minute 16 to go, second half. And coming up Tuesday on CBS, fighter jets are falling from the sky. Is it a government conspiracy or an act of terrorism? It's JAG, and you won't want to miss it. Tuesday on CBS. You know, Mark Few right now really has his hands full with decisions. Dickow's got to have the ball in his hands, but I'd look down low, see if they can get the big fella Calvary involved, at least take a look before you settle for anything long range. Gonzaga down one to Virginia. We come up on one minute to go. Dickow. Gord swings it inside. Hernandez. It's been a pleasant surprise. Step. The freshman can't hit the three. Side rim. And Virginia will be very deliberate here with 50 seconds to play and a one-point lead. Zags just have to stop the defense right now. No need to foul. Virginia's a pretty good free-throw shooting team, and they have a couple on the floor that can knock them back. They have to attack, though. They can't just settle back and play it lackadaisical here. You have to go after it.
30 seconds to go. 85-84 Virginia leading Gonzaga. Mason a three. Off the rim. Offensive rebound. Mathis couldn't hold on to it. And a foul. Big call for Virginia as Mathis, the freshman, was losing the handle. And Zach Gord has just picked up his fourth. Well, Pete Gillen wanted to have the ball in Mason Jr.'s hands. <laughs> so animated. The life of a coach. One and one for J.C. Mathis. Youngest player on this team. You're going to make him think about it a little bit. 21.4 to go. Free throws when we return to Memphis in a moment. What we expected in this 5-12 matchup, a one-point game late, 21.4 remaining. You see the game reset. Gonzaga does not want to be thought of as a Cinderella. Sweet 16 last year, Elite 8 the year before. A Mark Fuse team right now is down one with Virginia. Having a chance, Pete Gillen's freshman, J.C. Mathis at the free throw line. One and one, he shoots it at 49%. Both of these teams have been just delivering body blows all afternoon. Nobody could deliver the knockout punch. And Mathis right now has a, an opportunity to give them a little breathing room. Big moment for this young player. In and out on the first. And Gonzaga with the ball. Down one. 17 seconds to go. I think you want to be aggressive with the ball right here. Go towards the basket. And it's Dickow off penetration. Blocked underneath. Cavalry got it to go with nine seconds left. A terrific follow. Just tracked the basketball all the way. And Mason Jr. has to go quickly also. Gonzaga up one. Virginia ball. Mason to the rim. Upstairs. Knocked away. It's over. Forget about Cinderella. Gonzaga once again has proven they are legit. They beat Virginia 86 to 85. Mark Few was confident coming into this basketball game that they could play with the heavyweights, and Pete Gillen walks away a loser. A one point win for Gonzaga. Bulldogs are off to the second round. And a loss for the Cavaliers, their first time back in the tournament since 97. Casey Cavalry had been quiet throughout the day, but he got the most pivotal bucket of the afternoon. Mark Few has his team into the second round in Memphis. What a great game, start to finish. And no one would go away, just a terrific game, as you mentioned, with their team staying with it. Brett Haber standing by with Mark Few. All right, guys, thank you very much. Mark, another upset for this program in the NCAA tournament, a 12 beats a five. Do you think you finally shed this label of being a Cinderella team? Well, I, I hope we have. I tell you what, we beat a very, very good basketball team today that's very well coached and, and gave us all kinds of fits. And I, I mean, I think either team could have won. We were very fortunate to win it right there at the end. Let me ask you this. Dan Dickow transfers from Washington. Is he the best thing that's ever happened to you? Uh, I, my wife and kid are ranked up there. From a basketball standpoint. From a basketball point of view, he's been very valuable to our program, but I can't pick him out over Casey Calvary or any of the Zags, but he's, he's had a tremendous year, and hopefully he'll continue to play like he did today. He was phenomenal tonight. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Gonzaga has done it again, guys. All right, Brett, thank you very much. Mark Few in his second year as the head coach of the Bulldogs. And another NCAA tournament win. Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. It's Dan Dickow from Gonzaga. 29 points, 5 assists. And deadly from 3-point range. Roger Mason Jr. had an opportunity at the end. He finished with 30, the high man. And the Zags are zigging to the second round. Where they will meet the winner of Oklahoma, Indiana State. And that game is coming up here in Memphis. An exciting ball game, obviously. Just one you just buckle up the last five minutes. I really have to give credit to Mark Few and company, just the way they hung around, because it got a little tough for them also. So for Jim Spinarco, Brett Haber, this is Ian Eagle saying so long from the pyramid in Memphis. 86-85, it's Gonzaga, a winner over Virginia. For more college hoops, stay with CBS. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA basketball championship. Great start in Memphis.
Welcome back to our studios in New York, uh, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg as we uh, continue to travel the road to the Final Four. And uh, you look now at Gonzaga's 86-85 win over the Virginia Cavaliers. You know, both of these teams deserve an awful lot of credit for what happened in this game, Clark. Well, it was a terrific battle between entertaining styles. Neither team would give up. Gonzaga was able to push out and get a double-digit lead a couple of different occasions. Roger Mason Jr. for Virginia was fabulous. Just a well, well-played game, and Gonzaga able to get the last shot to go in the hole. As we take a look at what happened in the final sequence, Dickow does exactly what you want a floor leader to do. He took the ball, went right to the hole, and Calvary was there for the, uh, the for the rebound. 17 seconds to go. I think you want to be aggressive with the ball right here. Go towards the basket. And it's Dickow off penetration. Blocked underneath. Cavalry got it to go with nine seconds left. A terrific follow. Just tracked the basketball all the way. And Mason Jr. has to go quickly also. Gonzaga up one. Virginia ball. Mason to the rim. Upstairs. Knocked away. It's over. Forget about Cinderella. Gonzaga once again has proven they are Gonzaga, legit. Gonzaga a winner, 86-85. The Bulldogs will play the winner of Oklahoma and Indiana State. We'll take a time out and continue with more after this word from your local station.